to another sewing tutorial. My name is Anne-Sophie and I'm the person behind Sewing with Solana and today I think it's going to be a really cool tutorial because I'm going to show you how we can change the Alicia blouse pattern to make the gunny inspired blouse and I just want to put a little disclaimer here. I've never actually changed the Alicia blouse pattern to make the gunny inspired blouse. First I wanted to like test it, make sure I can then explain it to you perfectly but then I decided it would actually be cool if I'm gonna take you along the process with me and maybe show you the mistakes that I make and then also show you how we can fix the mistakes so we can all learn from our mistakes together. So yeah, just a little disclaimer here that there will be some mistakes but I'll teach you how we can fix them again. And if you've watched some of my other videos before, you heard me talk about this Etsy store before. It's called Linen Dream Shop and I love their linen fabrics and I'm using Vanilla White. And I'm going to link it down below because they also gave me a discount code for you. Um, and then also you need to get the Alicia blouse sewing pattern. I'm also going to link it down below. Maybe you've already made the Alicia blouse and then you already have the sewing pattern printed out. And once you have printed it out and once you have cut it out in your right size, you're going to need some brown paper. I always use like, I think it's like packaging paper, but this is like the paper that I always use to make my sewing patterns. Because the first thing we need to do now is we need to trace our sewing pattern onto the brown paper and then we can change it. Um, and I have two meters of fabric here because I've never actually made the blouse. I don't know how much fabric we're going to use, but now that you see this video, you can just read the description and find a list of all the things we need for today's sewing tutorial. And yeah, I don't think I have to do any more talking and I think we should start changing our sewing pattern. The first thing you want to do is you want to take the back piece of your Alicia blouse and we're going to trace it onto our paper. So this is what it will look like and because we now want to shorten the length of the blouse. So I measured 18 centimeters from down here and made a new mark here. So our blouse will now end here and then oops, you can just erase this part again. And what we want to do next is we need to find the middle of this line. So 25.5 is like, let's say 12 and a half. And then what we need to do is because what we're doing now is we're going to create a dart because we want the top of the blouse to be a bit more fitted. So once we have found the middle here, I'm going to measure two centimeter both ways. So two, two centimeter this way and then two centimeter this way. And then from this middle part here again, I'm going to measure 13 centimeters up, make a line. And now we need to connect those two marks with the top here. For now that's all we need to do to the back piece so i'm gonna label mine i'm gonna call it the gunny blouse size small cut times one and here it needs to be folded so we can now cut it out oh and also write on it that it's the back So here we have our back piece now and what we need to do is we need to create a second pattern piece for the back because we want to make the blouse longer again but this time we want to have a long piece of fabric that's then gonna be ruffled together before we sew it onto the back piece of the blouse. So to do that we need to measure this part here and then we also need to measure how long this part is here and then we're gonna add it together. So this part for me is 10... no. 11 centimeters and this one is 10.5 so that's going to be 21.5 centimeter and then we're going to multiply it by 1.5 and that's so that's 32.25 but I'm just going to round it up to 33 centimeters so now the next sewing pattern I'm going to make is going to be 
33 centimeters long and because before we shortened this by 18 centimeters so I'm gonna add another centimeter for seam allowance so I'm gonna make it 19 centimeters wide So here's the part that we're gonna sew onto the back. But again, we need to make sure that we're gonna fold the fabric here. So it's gonna be double as long. And it's the gunny blouse. Size small. So here we have our back pieces now. Here is the lining. You can just use the same one from the Alicia blouse for the back lining. I just traced mine out again just so I can then have all my sewing pattern pieces for the gunny blouse together. So we have the back piece, then we have the part that we're gonna gather together to attach down here, and then we have the lining for the back. So here we have the front piece and again we're going to measure 18 centimeters from the end of the blouse. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to make a straight, like I'm going to extend this line, so I'm going to make a straight line up here and then I'm also going to make a straight line from over here and I made sure that this line is touching this shoulder part and what we need to do now is we need to create a neckline and I'm just gonna freestyle it So I just kind of freestyled a neckline, I just went with my gut feeling now and from here, from where my new neckline is, to up here this corner, it measures 10 centimeters and then I would recommend just following this line here and then making a soft curve here. And then we can erase this. And now we need to decide how many bows we want. I want to have three. So I'm gonna make the first one one centimeter down from our new neckline. So I'm gonna make a mark here. Then I'm gonna make a mark here, but I'm gonna mark it two centimeters up from the end here, just to leave a bit more room for the seam allowance down here. And then we need to find the middle between those two. So 27, the easiest way to find the half of a distance is just fold it in half. So that's going to be 13 and a half. So I'm going to have one strap sewn in here and one strap sewn in here and one strap sewn in here. And also in the front here we want to create a dart. I'm just going to make this line a bit darker so you can see it better. So now we need to find half of this length again, so 29.5 is 14.75, so we're just going to say 14 and a half, which is going to be right here. And this time I'm going to measure 12 centimeters up from here. And again, mark two centimeters away from here. 
and then also two centimeters in the other direction and now we need to connect and now we can cut it out So what you can do now is you can just hold your sewing pattern like you're gonna match like put the shoulder where the seam is gonna be and then you can just hold it against you just to see if you like the neckline and I'm actually super happy how my neckline turned out because I want it to be quite high but I don't want it to be touching my neck so this turned out perfectly but yeah if you want to change it you can make some changes to it now and now we need to create the sewing pattern again for the ruffle part that we're gonna attach to the front piece here. Now we need to measure this again and then also from here to here and mine was 25.5 together. So one part was 13 centimeters, the other one 12 and a half and that was 25.5 and then we need to multiply it by 1.5 and that was 38 centimeters so my fabric piece needs to be 38 centimeters long So I'm just going to label it again, it's the gunny blouse, size small, and this time we have to cut it out two times and it is the front. So now our two front pieces are ready and I can just erase this. So here we have our two front pieces. This piece we need to cut out four times and this one we cut out two times. Now we need to work on one last pattern piece and that is the sleeve which we have here and now it depends a bit of how you want your blouse to look like maybe you want short sleeves maybe you want long sleeves maybe you want medium sleeves that's what I'm going for and I'm just going to show you on this dress that I made here a while ago we are going to sew in elastic down here and when I put on the sleeve um, I like it when let's say my elastic sits up here let me put the camera down a bit um, I like it that you can't really see the elastic so you need to have quite a bit of extra length to your sleeve so then the fabric like here's the elastic and then the fabric is hanging over it so this is kind of what I want my sleeve to be like I just want it to be actually a bit longer I want it to have this length I think or I'm not sure do I want a long sleeve I don't know if I want long sleeve let me look at some photos so here the original gunny blouse has like mid length three quarter or whatever you call it and um, but then I saw some other ones oh well actually they all have the same length this one and this one okay I'm gonna make mine like in the photos because I really like it and I feel like the Alicia blouse has already long sleeves so let's do a sleeve that sits around here if you want it to look the same then just follow my pattern and my measurements also one thing that we need to change about our pattern because when we made the Alicia blouse it was like a slimmer fitting like there was no ruffles on top so it wasn't a big puffy sleeve but we're gonna do the same as we as I did for the dress here so we're gonna ruffle some fabric together and the ruffle fabric is gonna sit on top of your shoulder so what we need to do now we need to make this whole sleeve wider to give it more volume 
Um, so yeah, those are the two main things we need to do now. We need to make the sleeve wider and bigger so we can ruffle fabric together to give it more volume and we need to adjust the length of it. So let's go. So here we have our sleeve with the adjusted length and what we need to do now is we need to cut this apart and then glue it again on paper so we have the sleeve with more volume. So here, this is the center of the sleeve where it meets the seam, like the seams on the shoulder. And because this part here and also this part here, I don't want to have any gathered fabric. So I measured now six centimeters away from here this way and six centimeters this way. And now I'm gonna cut it apart here. So this is what my sleeve looks like now. I measured six centimeters. Oh, let me double check that actually. Yeah, I measured six centimeters in between here and then six centimeters in between here. And then what you want to do is you want to follow this line. And that means I had to put the middle piece of the sleeve two and a half centimeters higher. So this first piece I glued on the edge here. And then this middle piece, I had to put two and a half centimeters above, like above here. And then the last piece is again like six centimeters apart from the middle piece and you can glue it down to the bottom again. And what you need to do now, you need to connect all the pieces. So you're just gonna follow the line. And now we can cut this out. And now we can also take the glued on pieces off again. I 
I just realized that I forgot to mark what the front and the back is. So I'm just gonna place my Alicia blouse pattern on it again so I know. So my fabric is folded in half and first I'm gonna cut the front pieces out two times and I'm gonna cut them out twice again. And I'm going to stick a needle right here. And I'm also going to make two little cuts here, make them around half a centimeter deep. And then also here where I marked where I want my straps to be, I'm going to make little cuts. Here, I just realized I made a mistake. So this notch can't be one centimeter down. We need to make it a little bit lower because one centimeter is going to be the seam allowance. So we're going to make the notch one and a half centimeters. And here we have the second piece for the back and because it needs to be cut on fold I'm going to place it here and the front piece fits here and because we need to cut it out twice it's perfect that the fabric is folded in half.
I got this new camera yesterday and it's a bit confusing because at my old camera the screen would flip up like straight up and now the screen is next to the camera and now I feel like the whole time I'm not looking into the camera but anyways I hope this camera works nice I hope the video and audio quality is good but what I wanted to say is that there's only one pattern piece missing and that's the strap to like tie the blouse together in the front and because I want to have three bows we need to cut six ties and I make mine shorter than from the Alicia blouse um, I'm gonna cut them five centimeters wide and I think I will make them 35 centimeters long. So yeah, I'm gonna cut mine five centimeters wide, 35 centimeters long and cut it out six times. So now that we have cut out all our fabric pieces, it's time to start sewing and we're gonna start sewing our straps. So we're just gonna start with one of them. We're gonna fold it in half and then we're gonna sew with a one centimeter seam allowance away from the folded edge. And we're gonna do it to all six of them, flip them inside out. And then we're gonna move on to the front and back pieces and we're gonna sew the darts. So let's go. So here's what the six straps look like. I've ironed them already, but now we can just put them to the side. And now I'm gonna start with the back piece. And I'm just gonna stick also a needle through here so I can pull this one out. And now we can open this up carefully to make sure that the needle stays in here. And now we're gonna sew a dart here. And then we're also gonna sew one over here. So make sure that the two notches we made here line up and then we're going to start sewing from here until where the needle is. When we sew a dart, like here at the beginning when you start, you can just front and back stitch so you can cut off the thread right here. But up here, as you just saw, I don't front and back stitch because it just looks much nicer when you now pull the threads apart and then make two knots and then you can cut the excess thread off. So I'm just gonna make three knots. And now I can cut like this. So here we have two of the front pieces and again we're just going to flip it over and stick a needle right where this one is.
and now we're gonna sew one dart here and then one on this side. And now we do exactly the same to the other two front pieces. So here we have the back piece and we are gonna iron them towards the middle. So now that we have sewn the darts and we ironed them, I was just laying them on here just to feel what it feels like. <laughs> and I think I need to take one or two centimeters away from here. Like I know like right now there's still like the seam allowance included. So once it's sewn, there's gonna be one centimeter less already anyways. But I want there to be a bit more skin in the front here. So I'm gonna, cut away one centimeter on all four front pieces from over here. I'm gonna flip the camera and show you again. But yeah, I just feel like there's gonna be a bit too much fabric for me right here. So here's one of the front pieces and I'm gonna cut away one centimeter away from here. So I'm just gonna take and measure one centimeter So now I just need to mark the notches here again. So I'm gonna place Thank you. 
And now I'm just gonna extend the line of the notch here and also gonna remove one centimeter from my sewing pattern just so for the next time. Okay, so now that that is fixed, we're gonna take one of the front pieces with the good side facing us, which means that the dart down here is facing the table. Then we take three straps and we're gonna place them where the notch is. And we take another front piece and this time we have to make sure that the good side is facing down. So the good sides are facing each other. And now we're going to put in everything together and then we're going to sew along here and across here and we're going to finish here again. Now I'm just gonna cut these here off. And I'm also gonna cut the corner here just because then it will look nicer. And also I'm gonna cut a little bit of this curved line here of the seam allowance away. And here we have it. Now we need to iron it and then we're also going to do the same thing to the other two pieces. So here's what our two front pieces look like now and I think they look super beautiful. I'm super happy how it turned out so far. Um, but now we put them to the side and we're going to start focusing on the back of our blouse and we're going to start with a facing and I'm going to overlock it from here till over here. To. Now we're just going to fold this overlock part up and then we're going to start sewing here all the way to the other end. So we're just going to fold it up around half a centimeter. So 
So this is what it looks like now. And now we take our back piece. Now we're going to take our back piece and we have the good side facing us so the darts are facing the table. And then we take our back facing and here this is the good side and this where we see the overlock stitching is the bad side. And we're going to have the two good sides facing each other and we're going to line this up and then we're going to sew along here. And now we're just going to overlock this part here. So right about now my camera started filming in slow motion and it didn't record the audio so I'm just going to do a voice over now. Um, what we have to do next is now we have the good sides facing us and now we pull the back and the back facing apart and we're going to sew the seam allowance onto the back facing. And another thing, but this is the only clip that it happened to, like this part wasn't recorded. So now I just used the clip of the Alicia blouse because we're doing exactly the same. Because I want you to see where I'm sewing, just so you really know what to do. Um, and we're just doing this so the back facing stays inside the blouse and doesn't open up and come out again. Like this is just like a nice way to make sure that the back facing is staying on the inside. And now you can see what the inside of the blouse looks like and then when you flip the blouse outside when you flip the back piece outside the good side you can't see any stitches and it looks super nice and now it's time to sew the other back piece onto the main back piece because we have this long piece of fabric and we want to ruffle the fabric together we want to gather the fabric and then sew it onto the other back piece and to gather fabric together we're going to change the settings of our sewing machine we're going to adjust the stitch length to as high as possible i can do mine to a four and then i'm also moving my needle to the right because it's better if we sew relatively close to the edge and it's very important when you want to gather fabric together that you don't front and back stitch so you just place your fabric under your foot or the needle whatever you want to call it and then you just start sewing and also when you finish sewing you don't front and back stitch because otherwise we won't be able to pull on the thread and gather the fabric together and now we want to make sure that the good side is facing us which means the darts are facing the table and then we take our long back piece and we are just going to hold on to one thread now we're going to pull the two threads apart and then we can just pull on it and we can start gathering the fabric together and then i would recommend you to do exactly the same on the other side just so you gather it together equally and then we're just gonna pin the sides together first one side and then we're also going to pin the other side together and then we can continue gathering the fabric and make sure it's gathered equally and it then needs to have the same length as our other back piece. I'm just going to stick some needle in there and pin everything together just because to me it's very important that when I'm sewing that everything looks neatly and the fabric is spread equally. 
And now when we sew again, it's very important that you change the settings of your sewing machine back to normal. So I put my stitch length back to two and a half and I moved the needle back into the middle. And now it's also important again to front and back stitch. And yeah, just take your time here. Make sure that all the fabric gets sewn on properly and we just sew from one end to the other. And here you can see what it looks like now. This is the inside of the blouse. And then the other side looks like this. Just make sure that the darts stay facing each other when sewing. And I'm just cutting off some loose thread. And the next thing we have to do, we go back to our overlock machine again, and we're just gonna overlock that part. And again, if you don't have an overlock machine, you can just use a normal sewing machine and change it to a zigzag option. And we're doing this because we don't want the fabric to fray anymore. And now we have to do the same to the front, more or less. There's some things we do differently. So here are, here are, here are our, oh God, <laughs> here are our two front pieces. And we need to hem one of the sides of each front piece, which means I'm folding it in one centimeter and then one centimeter again, pinning it in place. And then I'm doing exactly the same to the other front piece. And just remember, you don't need to do it to both sides, just to one side of each front piece. And then we're just gonna go and sew that. And now we're changing the settings of our sewing machine again. We are gonna set it to a four or maybe yours can go up to a five. And then I'm moving my needle to the right again. And now we're doing what we did earlier. Like we're gonna do a long stitch along the longer part of the fabric. Um, so we're doing it on one side and then we are taking the other fabric piece and doing the same to the other fabric piece. And now we're doing things a bit differently now because what we want to do now is we basically want to sandwich the gathered fabric in between the other top part. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the front pieces and we're going to open it up again. And then we're taking the side of the gathered fabric where we hemmed it and we're placing it in the corner right there. And then we're going to take the two front pieces and we're just going to wrap them around the gathered fabric. I'm just gonna stick a needle in there now and now I'm gonna start gathering the fabric. I'm pulling the two threads apart to start pushing the fabric together and then I'm pinning the other sides of the fabrics together and then I'm just gonna continue gathering the fabric making sure it's spread equally and then we can start sewing it. And when we start sewing, just make sure again that you changed your settings of your sewing machine back to normal. So my stitch length, I put it to two and a half and I put my needle back to the middle again.
and here's what it looks like now and what we want to do now we go back to our old block machine and we're just going to overlock it and then you have to do exactly the same to your other front pieces i didn't film it again because i thought it would be a bit boring showing it again if you need to see it again just go back and watch this part again but here we have our two front pieces now and the next thing we want to do now is we want to sew the front and the back together and we are going to start sewing them together on the shoulder so we're just going to take one front piece for now and again we're going to open the fabric up again because once again we want to sandwich the back piece this time in between the two shoulder pieces of the front and what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the shoulder parts it doesn't matter if it's the right or left shoulder of the back the only thing that's important is that we're first going to start focusing on the corner that's on the neckline so not the corner where the sleeve is going to be but the part where we had sewn in the back facing and then we're going to start pinning that into the corner of the two front pieces and just pin across the shoulder And once everything is put together, just here I'm taking one more needle to really make sure everything's in place because you also want to make sure that the back facing is not moving around. So you also sew in now the back, the back facing and the two front pieces. And then we go to our sewing machine and we're just going to sew across the shoulder part. And then we're going to do exactly the same to the other side as well. And here you can now see how nice it looks. So right now we're looking at the outside, but even when we flip it and have a look on the inside of the blouse, it also looks super, super nice. And now we have to do exactly the same to the other shoulder and we're taking the front piece again, open it up again, and then we're taking the corner where the back facing is as well. And we're going to start sandwiching it in between the two front pieces. We pin everything in place. We make sure that the back facing is also included in all of that. And once everything is pinned in place, we go over to our sewing machine again and we're just going to sew across it. And now that the front and back are sewn together, I tried the blouse on and I've run into a problem. There's one thing I really don't like about it and that is the placement of the second strap. I decided that I would prefer it much better if the second strap would be five centimeters lower where my bra is because I know me and I know that I'm not gonna wear a t-shirt or a tank top underneath. Like I will either wear a bra or maybe even nothing underneath. And I would like it if it just would be lower. So what I did, I opened the front part up again. So we're just going to start with one side and I opened the front up again. And then I started, no, well, the first thing I did now before I opened up any seams is I measured from my second strap, I measured five centimeters down. And then I took my scissors to make a little notch of where I want my strap to go. And once you have made that mark, if you want to, you can make a cut like me, or maybe you can also just mark some like make a little mark with some chalk on there but once you have made your mark it's time to unpick your seams again so i took my seam opener and i'm going to start opening the seams from where the strap is right now to where i want my strap to be And this is definitely taking some time, especially because I always sew over my straps twice. So yeah, opening up the seams again makes it a bit harder. But once we have it open, we can move our strap down and place it where we want it to go. I had to open a few more stitches up here just to really make sure it's going to sit where I want it to sit. 
and once it's where I want it to be I take a needle pin it in place and then we need to sew that gap close again which means I'm just gonna start sewing a few centimeters above where I started opening the seam up again and then we sew all the way down to where the strap is now and just a few centimeters further and just make sure again to front and back stitch where your new strap is now. And you want to do exactly the same to your other side again and I then also went ahead to change that on my sewing pattern just in case, well, I know I will probably make this blouse again because I'm so happy how it turned out. And if I want to make it again, I don't want to make the same mistake again. So every time you make changes to your piece, make sure to also change the changes on your sewing pattern. And now I've tried it on and now I'm really happy with where my second strap is sitting. But then I started to be super torn with what's going on between my first and my second bow. So I had a few options, like either I could leave it like that, but to me it was too uneven now. Like the distances between all the three bows were too uneven and I didn't like it. I could have either moved the whole neckline lower, so this way I could have brought the first and the second bow closer together. But I really like how high the neckline is, especially compared to the Alicia blouse. Like I wanted the two blouses to be very different from each other. So what I have decided instead is to add another bow. Um, at first I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to have four straps but that was the best option for me and at the end I really really started liking it so what we have to do is we have to cut two more straps as we did in the beginning so I cut them out and I started sewing them just as we did in the beginning and then it's time again to open up the front again and this time we need to find the middle distance between the first and the second strap and the easiest way to do it is just to like fold it in half, line up the two straps and then you can see where the middle is. And again, I took my scissors to make a little cut right there. And then you just need to open up the seam again right where the cut is, maybe a few centimeters before and a few centimeters after just so you have enough space to pull it through there. And it just took me a bit of time again just because I have been sewing over there now a few times so it took me a moment to open up the seam but yeah once it was opened I was able to pull my strap <laughs> through there and then I just went to my sewing machine and closed the gap again. And then you have to do exactly the same again to your other front side. And I would also recommend again to make the new mark on your sewing pattern. But again, like I just preferred to move my second strap. Like if you're happy how it looked with three bows, you don't have to make the changes that I did. But yeah, I was really happy with my changes. And now it's time to attach, attach the sleeves. The sleeve. The first thing I did now is I made sure that the blouse is laying in front of me and I measured five centimeters away from the shoulder seam. Right now you can't see it very well, but I measured five centimeters in either direction and I stuck a needle in there because we attach the sleeves later on and we gathered also fabric together of our sleeve and I want the gathered fabric to sit in between where the two needles are now. So I want the gathered fabric to be five centimeters from the shoulder seam towards the front and also five centimeters of gathered fabric onto the shoulder towards the back. Okay. And now we take our sleeves and we're just gonna start with one. And we have to make a long stitch um, relatively close to the edge again so we can gather this together. So I'm just gonna start, I don't really know, I'm just gonna start here till around here. So this part, like the first curve, you don't need to include and also down here. So I'm just gonna start around here till here. We're gonna change the length to four again. I'm gonna move my needle to the right again.
And what we do now, we're gonna lay the top in front of us with the good side facing us. And now we're just gonna attach one sleeve and then later you will do exactly the same to the other side. And the reason why I put the needles here five centimeter away from the shoulder seam is because I want the ruffled part of the sleeve to be in between this section here. And now just make sure that it's all spread evenly and now we're just going to attach the sleeve to the blouse. So here's what it looks like now and now we're just going to do exactly the same to the other side. So now what we need to do is we need to overlock this part here that we have sewn and then we're also going to have to do exactly the same to the other sleeve. So now we take our blouse and we're going to make sure that the good side is facing us and we're just going to focus on one sleeve and then we're going to again do exactly the same to the other sleeve. So here we have the front, here we have our sleeve and then here's the back and what we're going to do is we're just going to fold the sleeve in half and then we're going to line up the two seams here. And now we're gonna pin along here, along the sleeve and all the way along down here. And then we're gonna sew it, overlock it and repeat the same to the other side. Here we have it. And now we're just gonna start sewing here and go down there.
So now we need to create the tunnel where we then pull the elastic through. And to do that, we're going to flip the sleeve, having the bad side face up, face us. And first we're going to fold it just like half a centimeter up and we're going to do this all around and I'm going to iron it. And I'm going to use elastic that's one centimeter wide. So I'm going to fold my fabric now around two centimeters up to make sure that there's enough space for the seam allowance and also for the elastic. So I'm just going to check that there's really enough space. I'm going to measure it. Oops. Yeah, so it's around two centimeters and it depends a bit how wide your elastic is, but I would recommend adding, however wide your elastic is, adding an extra centimeter for the seam allowance and to make sure that there's enough space for your elastic to move around. So here's what it will look like. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start sewing. I always start sewing here where the seam is. So I'm gonna start sewing here relatively close to the edge. So probably around here and we're going to sew all the way around but then we're going to stop here again because we need to leave a gap where we then pull the elastic through. Okay, so now we take our elastic and we're just gonna wrap it around our arm. Depends a bit like if you decided to make your sleeve into a long sleeve or not. Um, so if you made it into a long sleeve and you wanna add elastic, just measure your wrist right here. But because I want my elastic to sit here, I'm gonna wrap the elastic around. I'm gonna make sure that it's not too tight. Um, because when the fabric is going to be scrunched up, it's going to add a few more centimeters to your arm. So I'm just going to wrap it around here. Then I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to make sure that there's a centimeter added for seam allowance. And then I'm going to cut the same amount of elastic again, because we need two pieces, one for each arm. Um, so that's what mine are looking like. I can measure them just so you have some reference. But I always say like all elastics have a different stretch to it. Um, but yeah, mine is 26.5 centimeters. And now we need to pull it through the tunnel that we made. And I'm gonna take two safety pins. I'm gonna put one in here. And then one on the other side. And what we need to do next is we're just going to start with one safety pin pushing it through the gap that we have left until it comes out at the other end again. Now that both sides, like both safety pins are out, just make sure, like feel the elastic, make sure that it didn't get twisted along the way. And now we can take the safety pins out. And 
and now we overlap them like this and I'm just gonna put a safety pin through here and then I'm going to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna over it a few times to make sure it doesn't open up again. And now we need to close the gap. So, so now I would recommend you to try on your blouse again. One last time, we have one last step that we need to do. We need to hem our blouse. So I would recommend you to try it on to figure out how long you want yours to be. Um, this is completely up to you. I'm gonna make my hem, I think, I think I'm gonna fold it up one centimeter, one centimeter again, or maybe one and a half. But yeah, I love it so much. I'm so happy how it turned out. So yeah, now we just need to hem it, figure out how long you want yours to be. And then we're finished. <laughs> No, no, my, I ran out of thread. Oh my God, right at the beginning. Ah, oh, that's real pain. We are now finished sewing our Gunny inspired blouse and I'm so happy how mine turned out. Like I feel like the fabric is perfect, the fit is perfect. I'm so happy that I decided to add another bow. I love the length of the sleeves. I don't know, like so happy. It's so nice when you sew something for the first time and it turns out so nicely. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment, send me a message. Please send me photos of you wearing your blouse. It always makes me so happy. Maybe I will actually release a sewing pattern for this, just in case there's some people out there who don't feel so comfortable changing the sewing pattern. Um, I don't know. I'll think about it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But let me know what you think. And I'm going to show you what mine looks like worn in a few seconds. And you're watching this video, which is a good sign because that means I have figured out a solution for my problem because I received a new camera and I unpacked it, charged the batteries and then started filming so I didn't spend any time figuring out how the camera actually works which means I shot half of my clips for this tutorial in slow motion and without audio and I realized that about 20 minutes ago. Oh, so annoying. But yeah, you're watching this which means I figured out how to change it um, and yeah, thanks for watching this video and I see you at my next tutorial. Bye!